In the 1950s, Mass media like radio, TV, newspapers, and magazines had a major impact in reaching large audiences. During this time, television became the most influential way of communicating, as it both reflected and influenced popular culture. The number of households with televisions increased rapidly, going from 9% in 1950 to 90% in 1960. At first, the Federal Communications Commission, FCC, a government agency that oversees the communications industry, placed restrictions on the number of television stations. Nevertheless, television stations quickly expanded throughout the entire nation, and numerous shows garnered immense popularity across the country. And the 1950s is commonly known as the golden age of television. Audiences found great pleasure in watching comedy shows featuring popular entertainers such as Milton Burley and Lucille Ball. Edward R. Murrow introduced on-site reporting and interviews to television. Moreover, there were also westerns, sports events, original dramas, and children's shows such as The Mickey Mouse Club and The Howdy Doody Show. Advertisers utilized television's wide audience to develop products associated with the medium, including TV magazines and TV dinners. Television shows frequently portrayed the values of white suburban America, focusing on stable jobs, material prosperity, obedient children, and fitting in with societal norms. Critics raised concerns about how women and minorities were represented on TV. They felt that television often showed an idealized version of white America, while neglecting important matters such as poverty, diversity, and racism. As television became more popular, radio programming changed to focus more on news, weather, music, and local subjects. The radio industry flourished with more advertisements and the creation of additional stations. The movie industry encountered difficulties because of competition from television, which led to a decrease in the number of people going to the movies by almost 50%. In order to keep audiences interested, Hollywood adopted new technologies like color, stereo sound, and widescreens to make impressive movies. In the 1950s, television mostly showed the suburban lifestyle, focusing on traditional values and conformity. However, two subcultures arose that offered different perspectives. One of the subcultures was the beat movement, which was mainly based in cities such as San Francisco, Los Angeles, and Greenwich Village in New York City. The beats, also known as beatniks, were individuals who were writers, artists, and poets. They expressed their disapproval of the mainstream American society's tendency to conform and rebelled against consumerism. The beatniks did not live conventional lives. They did not have stable jobs and lived frugally. They often visited coffee houses where they would share their poetry and art. Their artistic creations possessed a liberated and unrestricted structure, which mirrored their defiance towards strict societal conventions. Prominent works of the beat generation encompass Allen Ginsberg's extensive poem, Howl, and Jack Kerouac's novel, On the Road. Although numerous Americans were not impressed by this alternative lifestyle, it struck a chord with numerous college students who were drawn to the beat movement's essence of rebellion and nonconformity. The beat generation played a role in changing culture and had a long-lasting influence on American literature, arts, and countercultural movements. During the 1950s, certain African-American musicians embarked on a fresh musical path by combining blues and electronic instruments, resulting in the creation of rhythm and blues R&B. A new genre called rock and roll emerged, blending R&B, country, and pop elements. Rock and roll rapidly gained popularity as a widely loved genre of American music that crossed racial barriers and appealed to people of all races. Rock and roll music was known for its powerful beat, uncomplicated tunes, and lyrics that struck a chord with young people, centering on topics such as romance, automobiles, and the struggles of adolescence. This music was particularly popular among teenagers. Artists such as Chuck Berry, Bill Haley and the Comets, and especially Elvis Presley, became iconic figures of this genre. Elvis Presley specifically gained the unofficial nickname of the King of Rock and Roll, thanks to his many popular songs that sold millions of copies. Despite criticism from adults, who expressed concerns about the potential impact of rock and roll on teenage behavior, the genre's popularity continued to increase due to its exposure on television and radio, ultimately making it more widely accepted. During the 1950s, numerous skilled African-American musicians emerged, captivating audiences of diverse racial backgrounds. Besides rock and roll artists, singers such as Nat King Cole, 
Lena Horn, and Harry Belafonte made important contributions to different music genres. Jazz musicians such as Miles Davis and Dizzy Gillespie also delighted audiences with their extraordinary talent. Prior to the widespread integration of the radio industry, there existed radio stations that specifically served African-American listeners. These stations played music by popular black artists and catered to advertisers who wanted to reach black audiences. This emphasized the cultural influence of African-American musicians during this time. Their contributions enhanced the American music scene and had an impact on the wider music industry.